So now, in the meantime, I'm watching this movie from Universal Pictures called Streets of Fire. And I'm very interested in it because it was originally going to be based on a Bruce Springsteen song, The Streets of Fire. For reasons I've never understood or, or been informed, he dropped out at one point and the film went forward. And it really didn't perform well in its opening weekend. And uh, I watched the film and I thought it quite peculiar as I'm watching it that it's being marketed as a love story. But Michael Pere and Diane Lane have almost no scenes together. So Bob Ramey has just moved over from Universal Studios to be the chairman uh, at New World with, a, with stock and a piece of the action and everything. And, and uh, I'm apparently the first meeting he's having and he's explaining to me in the room why he's going to cancel my picture. In the room is Peter Bierstedt, the head of legal, Roger Burlidge, the CEO, uh, Lenny Shapiro, the head of acquisitions, Bob Ramey, and myself. And, I, 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 and the three of them are in attendance witnessing Bob explain to me that he's going to crash the picture. And he wants to turn the meeting quickly into a post-production conference on Crimes of Passion, a film I have in post. So I... I I'm known for my salesmanship and, and I want to make my case to Bob before we move off and, and without having the time to do research and Google isn't even a thought on anybody's mind and there's no quick way to look things up and, and information isn't moving around town as freely as it may, I look Bob square in the eye and say, I don't know what kind of imbecile at Universal would green light a movie that's a love story where the leads don't ever have any scenes together but I can promise you I don't have that problem with my film because they're explaining why since Streets of Fire didn't open, Tough Turf shouldn't be made, because that was a rock and roll musical themed love story. And mine, if you will, was a rock and roll music themed love story, but I'm featuring the Jim Carroll band and such. Bob Ramey uh, leans across, rubs imaginary dust off of my lapel and holds it as he says to me, you're talking to the imbecile at Universal who greenlit the movie. At this point, Lenny Shapiro, is trying to get out of the room. <laughs> Peter Bierstedt is trying to suppress laughter so that he doesn't get fired. Roger Burlidge can't hold it in. It, it's, it's a very humorous moment. And it apparently worked. My movie got green lit and went on to be the number one picture for New World the following year. On that picture, we had some casting challenges. Linda Francis was quite sure from, from day one that James Spader should be the lead in the show. Well, Mr. Ramey didn't know who James Spader was, so we had to go through the charade of acting like we were going to see everybody. But when we went to New York City to continue the charade, it no longer became a charade. She brings back footage of, of a young man who wants to be in our movie as the lead, and his name's Robert Downey Jr. Some of the most hysterical footage you'll ever see in a casting interview is him reading for seriously the lead in this movie at a point in his life where he's clearly a comedian. He went on right after our film to get offered Saturday Night Live, which he took. So uh, once we see the footage, I, I've already got an offer out to Crispin Glover for the part. But I, I'm preferring to have Robert Downey Jr. in it, but Crispin Glover is a bit of a name. As it turns out, we didn't even have a prayer for Crispin Glover because he had taken a project with Nicolas Cage and they were off to the races with that. I don't recall if the film ever got made or not, but I know it created a, an unavailability for him.